Hello. Welcome, friends. Yay. We're all friends here, right? Can we be friends? Must be okay. I hope you are ready for some fun craftsiness because that is what we're getting today. So, yes. I've been wanting to do this for weeks now. I thought it was a really fun idea and I want to do it. Yeah. Unlike my Harry Styles videos, this isn't really going to be a tutorial, so I'm not going to like really go into depth with how to do all of the stitches that I'm doing, all the different kinds of knitting. Um, I will have videos linked around in the description and up in the corners. So this isn't going to be really a tutorial per se. I'm just going to show you how I did it. Um, so yeah. a few weeks ago, I thought it would be super cute and super fun to make the acorn top kind of hat cap acorn stem thing from Animal Crossing New Horizons because I adore it so much. I've had my character wear it for literally months now because I just, I can't find another hat that I just love as much. So I thought it'd be fun to try and make one using a pattern that I come up with. So yeah, like I said, this isn't going to be really a tutorial video. I will have a PDF downloadable version of my pattern written out that you should be able to download for free publicly on Patreon. So I, I'll have the link to my Patreon where you can go and you don't have to like sign up or anything. It'll just be free for the public um, to get and download it and try it yourself. And hey, if you do, tag me on Instagram because I'm excited for this. I've never created any sort of pattern of anything. So, and to also do it in knitting, which is still something I'm very new at. I've actually never made a hat. I've made the Harry Styles sweater and I knitted a pair of socks and that's the extent of my knitting and crocheting. So I'm excited to make a hat with my own sort of pattern. So I'm excited. I hope you're excited because I am excited. Let's get to it. Also, I bought scrunchie with like the little kind of like ribbony tail thingies and I adore it. I love it so much. They're super cute and I want only these now. So yeah, that's it. Okay, let's go. Let's get to the knitting. <laughs> For materials, you will need some yarn, uh, preferably in a nice earthy color. I like to work with size four yarn just because it feels and works nice for me, but you can use any size yarn you like, but know that using a different size yarn and needles will affect how many stitches you need for your hat. Circular needles, I'd say at least 24 inches if you have a smaller head like I do. Here I have 36 inches. I'm using size eight needles, which is the size that the label on my yarn suggests for this particular yarn size. If in doubt of what size needles to use, I'd follow your yarn label. Uh, some stitch markers, which can also be small loops of different color yarn or paper clips, but I highly suggest getting some locking stitch markers. And some scissors to cut the yarn when done. And then also you will need a little tapestry needle to finish off the hat. Uh, so to begin your hat, uh, for sizing, I just did a little bit of trial and error and a lot of fittings where I just did some uh, rough estimates of like how many stitches I would need and then just kind of fit them on my head as I went and I found out that I need about 104 stitches to kind of fit my head comfortably. For casting on the stitches themselves, I decided to use the German twist cast on method, which is a kind of long tail cast on and helps the foundation row be really nice and stretchy. I saw somewhere in like some random knit video of probably the hundreds that I've watched already, uh, that an easy way to make sure you have a long enough tail is to just wrap the yarn around your needles about the number of stitches you think you might need, though I like to add a few extra just in case. 
Uh, to do the German twist, you first need a slip knot, and then with the tail facing you on the left side of the needle, insert your thumb and index between the strands and create a sort of triangle shape with the yarn using your ring and pinky to hold the strands in place. Then take the needle between the tail around your thumb, then through the gap, over and around the strand around your index, and then back through the gap of the tail before pulling the loop closed. Then cast on as many stitches as you want. I'd suggest a number that is a multiple of four plus one extra stitch because the very last stitch will actually be casted off to join the yarn in the round. So in this case, I casted on 105 stitches with that last one being cast off to join the round of 104 stitches for the hat. So the first two rows will be a garter stitch, which when working in the round is literally just a row of knit stitches and then a row of purl stitches. Do both a knit and a purl row once for a nice little border down at the bottom. The majority of the hat will be in the double moss stitch, which gives the knitting a nice little bumpy texture. To do the double moss, you knit two stitches then purl two stitches, and then continue repeating that pattern until you reach the end. The next row, you simply repeat the knit two, purl two pattern. The following two rows, you actually want to purl two stitches and then knit two stitches so that it's the exact opposite of the two rows that you had just did. And this is what gives the double moss stitch the nice little bumps in the diagonals. Do the double moss stitch so that you get six total rows two rows of knit two, purl two, two rows of purl two, knit two, and then another two rows of knit two, purl two, and then do another garter stitch border of a row of knit and a row of purl stitches. I think I'm gonna do this without glasses this time. Yee. Okay, so that is the bulk of the pattern I use for the hat um, and when I was kind of working out what I do as a pattern for the acorn hat. I hadn't quite figured out how I was going to do the decrease down to the stem. Uh, but since filming this little interlude, I have figured out how I am going to do the decrease and how I'm going to change the pattern and do a little bit of trial and error, which was really brought on by the fact that my needle slipped and I had to spend an entire day re-knitting my whole hat because I messed up, so that was fun. I did find this video on YouTube, which I used as a reference for the decrease. I will have it linked around because I'm not, I'm not entirely sure yet. I think I figured it out. I think I understand it pretty well, but I'm not entirely sure, so. but I'll leave a timestamp below where the video starts to talk about the decrease that apparently you can use on any hat. So do with that as you will, um, but hey, let's, let's give it a go. Also, side note, I found out about this thing called light academia. And I've been listening to a lot of playlists and looking at a lot of things on Pinterest and honestly, I kind of really, 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 really love it. That's it. Okay, bye. So now I'm at the point where I need to decrease the hat down to the stem bit of the acorn. And I did some hopefully accurate math where I will probably need about 21 to 23 rows to decrease down to the eight stitches that I want to end up with. I divided my 104 stitches into eight sections of 13 stitches, which at the end of all the decreases will leave only one stitch per section. Most of the decrease rows also have a non-decrease row in between so that the crown doesn't shrink too sharply. I had to change the pattern a bit so that the uh, crown section would still look nice, hopefully, really hoping. 
So I could only do two rows of a double moss on the decrease that leaves an even number of stitches between the markers and do two rows of the garter stitch on the odd decreases. And then to finish the head off, I used the Kitchener stitch, which I learned from knitting a pair of socks. Uh, it's simple enough, and I thought it would look the nicest. It's also literally the only thing I could think of in how to even do this, how to even close the hat off. So now the very adorable, very cute Animal Crossing acorn cap is finally done. I am so, so happy with how this hat turned out, especially considering that I am still very new to knitting and crocheting and that this was a pattern that I created myself and which is also my very first pattern that I've ever created. I have the pattern for this available as a PDF for free on my Patreon which I've linked in the description if you'd like to check it out. And if you do try this pattern, or if you even just use it as like a base reference for a different project, please tag me on Instagram with Atlas at Illocated, because I would very much love to see it. Ugh, that is a nightmare. So, even though I am very, very happy with how this turned out and very proud, I would... I think it would be interesting if I come back to this pattern sometime in the future and make some adjustments, just kind of like sizing wise, pattern wise. I think it could be really fun to kind of come back and do kind of like an updated version, especially when I've become a bit more skilled at knitting and crocheting. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this little video of me making my first pattern. This took so long that I actually impulsively cut bangs before I finished it and which I think are really really cute and I really really love them and it just I've never cut my hair before and this was probably the best success I could ask for. Anyways I hope you liked the video and I hope you have a really nice day whichever day you're watching this be it the day that I finally get to editing and uploading or sometime in the future. I hope that this video was either a bit of just some fun casual watching, which I am very much guilty of watching a ton of crafty videos with having no intention of ever doing them, or that it maybe helped inspire some creative fun. So yeah, I hope you had a grand old time. I did, despite it taking quite a long time. I really enjoy doing things like this and I hope to do more in the future. So I hope you feel like sticking around. And if not, have a nice day. Bye bye.